when you first start reading Japanese, it's going to be unbelievably, incomprehensibly, incredibly difficult. It's going to be so hard that you wonder why you're trying to do it. But all I can say is that if you keep on putting in the effort and you put up enough practice the way that you should, then it gets easier. It's really, really, really hard. It's really hard, but it gets easier. Okay, a couple ground rules. Number one, no machine translation. It will really, really hold back your Japanese. Number two, no parsers or furigana inserters or anything like that. Those are kind of bad for you. They're not the end of the world, and they won't keep you from learning Japanese, but if you depend on them, then you're not actually going to be able to internalize Japanese the way that you should. Number three, actually read. If you put off reading or you just read like a couple hours a week, then you're never actually going to get good at reading Japanese. One last really minor note, a lot of the tools that we're going to discuss are maintained by volunteers and have random quality problems, like every free Japanese to English dictionary that I know of uses JMDict, which is maintained by volunteers, and some of them do not have good functional grasps on Japanese. And for another example, uh, most mouse over dictionaries have some kind of conjugation uh, problem, some kind of problem with seeing conjugations properly. For example, mine doesn't deconjugate the very common irregular verb sudo at all. So just a couple of warnings that you're going to have to use your head whenever you run into anything confusing, because it's not always your fault. So before you can start reading Japanese, you need to build some foundations first. Basically, you need to know the hiragana and katakana, which are the phonetic part of the writing system of Japanese. And you also need to learn basic grammar, and you also need some basic vocabulary. So the vocabulary I'm talking about, by the way, is like a couple hundred words. I'm not asking you to go out and memorize 10,000 flashcards. That would be very unreasonable. So first of all, you need to learn the hiragana and katakana. Uh, most people that I know either used flashcards, or they wrote them down on paper a lot, or they used a drill tool like this. I'm recommending this drill tool, I have a link to it in the description. Uh, second, you need to learn basic grammar. Most people that I know read Take Him's Grammar Guide. Do not read the complete guide. Read the grammar guide. The complete guide is unfinished, and it's harder to read. So. Most people that I know would recommend trying to finish Take Him before you start reading, because everything in it is very basic, including almost everything in the Advanced Topics section. But if you start reading somewhere in the middle of Essential Grammar and you're not having any trouble with reading, then that's perfectly fine. So that's grammar, and then you need to know some basic vocab. Take Him happens to have a bunch of vocab lists. You don't want to try to specifically memorize any of the vocab lists in Take Him, but while reading Take Him, you're probably going to naturally pick up about 100 or 200 words, and that should be enough of a basis for the absolute bare minimum that you need to be able to read at all. But if that's not enough for you, then you can go out and memorize a couple of words from frequency lists, but you don't have to. Uh, you want to start reading as soon as you're actually capable of reading. You don't want to stall reading until after you've memorized 6,000 or 10,000 words, because you're going to become able to read a lot earlier than that if you try reading on a regular basis. So I'm actually linking to a single page version of Taikim in the description that's easier to search through because you can just control F and type stuff in. Like here, I have Nihongo in the search bar, and I just hit Nihongo, and it shows me everywhere that it uses Nihongo in the entire guide, because Take Him itself is split up into multiple pages. So that's the foundations out of the way. So for actually reading, you need a tool called Textractor. This is the most modern and currently updated text hooker. Um, if you go to the releases link here, and you click on this link here, then you get the English version, which is the normal version. And then you get an archive that contains it in a folder in that archive. And you just extract this folder somewhere, and then you open it up, and you run textractor.exe. I happen to have it extracted already. It's right here. And one of the things about Textractor is that it comes with a machine translation plugin, you do not want to use this. It is enabled by default for some stupid reason. To delete it, you just select it in the extensions list, which you open by pressing this button, and then you press delete. 
Another thing is the Remove Repetition plugin is necessary for some games, but you don't want to use it if the game doesn't need it because it can remove text that's actually part of what you want to read. Uh, some games duplicate every single character in the text one at a time when they get text hooked, and the Remove Repetition plugin is meant for filtering out the duplicate characters in games that hook badly like that, but you don't want it if it doesn't need it. So now I'm going to start the demo. This is basically unscripted, but basically you want to open up your clipboard grabber in your browser. Oh, sorry about this. It's a modern Firefox bug with Windows Classic theming. So you open up this and you open up the text hooker. You have a clipboard grabber, text hooker, and then you open up your game. You attach the text hooker to the game. and then you start the game. So this game, the first line of text doesn't hook properly because it's in the middle of the screen and it's not a normal text box. That's pretty common. Sometimes stuff just isn't gonna text hook and if you need the text hook to be able to read stuff, then you're just going to have to find a way to either ignore it or draw it into Google Translate to get it as characters or something. Oh, right, uh, don't use machine translation for anything other than maybe character recognition because it's going to have a lot of problems. So here we see that the text did not actually get copied to the clipboard, and that's because I don't have the right hooking thread selected. Usually the hook that you want is the one on the bottom, but if it's not, then you can go through them with the arrow keys, either with it down or with it up. So here you can see that this one has a bunch of duplicate characters. That's what it would look like if it was hooking into a game that didn't support... Uh, if it was hooking into a game that required the Remove Repetition plugin, it would look something like this. But we don't need it because one of these hooks doesn't have that problem. So we can just copy that to Clipboard by selecting it. And this Copy to Clipboard extension makes it so that when anything is added here, then it automatically gets copied so we don't have to keep on selecting it. So now I'm going to open up the mouse over dictionary, or enable it rather. And now I can, I'm going to resize this so it doesn't overlap. So now we can see that as I mouse over stuff, it gives me the readings and the definitions. So this is the topic particle, wa, and it just so happens that my dictionary happens to list the entry for the topic particle all of the way down here on the fourth entry instead of at the top where it should be. So that's a problem, and every mouse over dictionary is going to have weird definition ordering like this. So you're just going to have to scroll through the definitions. Usually you can just lift up your mouse and use the scroll wheel, but sometimes you have to do something else. It depends on the mouse over dictionary and what the clipboard grabbing page is like. So we can see here, uh, this would have been reduced to this by the remove repetition plugin, but it's actually, the repetition is emphasizing how constant the thing that is being described was. So it's not just itsumo naiteta, it's so we see here it's uh, I have this, this is upside down by the way if I go into the backlog then it shows them from top down but the clipboard grabber here shows them bottom up uh, mine has this configurable but usually you just have to deal with whatever your clipboard grabber decides to insert things as so so, my little sister was a crybaby, or is a crybaby, or whatever. But then we go to the next line and we can see, oh, it's past tense. So it must have been, was a crybaby. And as you keep reading, then you're going to run into things that you have to look up in order to understand things. Like, even if you're, uh, how do I put this? Even if you have a good foundation for what for how Japanese is structured, there's still going to be a lot of times when you have to look stuff up, and that's what the mouse over dictionary is for. It's so that you don't have to manually copy things and then go to some website like gshow.org and paste them in. But sometimes you still want to do that. So this flashback is about the protagonist being injured, like dying injured, and his little sister crying on him. And I'm skipping forward so that I can get to this word right here. This. So this word says revolving lantern in the dictionary, but I have no idea what that is. Like, what does a lantern have to do with that flashback that just happened? That's right, you're gonna have to look stuff up on your own outside of the mouse over dictionary. So 
if you take this word and you plug it into Google, then all of the results that you get are either going to be Chinese or Japanese. And because you're a beginner, you can't read any of this without severe, severe effort. So first of all, you can go to images and see, oh, it's this particular thing that I happen to know what it looks like already, but I don't know what kind of significance that has in Japanese culture or why it would be being named in this situation. So what's up with that? In recent years, this somato has become associated with the life flashing before your eyes phenomenon that happens before death. So basically, the protagonist is saying, Oh, so you really do see your life flash before your eyes when you die. I've read this prologue like 20 times because this is like the 20th time that I've tried to record this demo because I'm so bad at it. Ah, uh, yeah, this is a name, and you are not going to find a name like this in the dictionary. So if I go into the options, some visual novels have character names in Romaji in the options, but this one doesn't. So I have to bring it to Google instead. Uh, that's not what I wanted to search. It replaced my clipboard on me, because that's what the clipboard grabber does. So you're going to be annoyed by that. And none of these are what I want, so I'm going to type in VNDB. Uh, I typed that wrong. And this is her. Shirahase. So sometimes you have to worry about VNDB giving you spoilers. But if you set it to hide spoilers, then you don't have to worry about it. The default is configurable in your account if you have an account. So that's one way of looking up name readings if you don't have a way of finding them in-game. Uh, sometimes games use furigana to, to mark names when they first appear, or they put the reading in parentheses. But that doesn't always happen, and sometimes you have to look things up. So basically, this is all that I think I had to show you about how to use mouse over dictionaries and text hookers and stuff. So just remember that you're always going to have a hard time, time reading until you read for enough. And it's going to be really, really, really hard, but it gets easier. As long as you keep reading. So somehow you've watched this entire video. Uh, I have no idea why you would do that instead of just skipping through it, but good job. Um, the description has a list of resources and other useful advice that I haven't listed here. And what else was there? Oh right, the comments will probably correct me because I'm sure that there's a bunch of shit that I got wrong. Uh, this is basically the only kind of situation where it's good to read YouTube comments, so go ahead and do it. And... what else? It's really, really, really hard. It's so hard. But it gets easier. You won't believe me when I say it. But it really, really gets easier.